Hey everyone, thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today we're going to be talking about Bitcoin. We're going to be just giving you a, an update as we are preparing to go into the halving. Um, so if you guys like the content, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, turn your notifications on by clicking the bell icon and also join the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. And you can also see in the upper right hand corner. The reason I want to make this video is just to talk about the, uh, you know, the current price action and then this primary logarithmic regression band. Um, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm tempted to start calling this, this logarithmic regression band fit to non-bubble data. Old faithful, because it seems like more or less, you know, price always returns to it. We have these speculative bubbles, but then we return back to that regression band. Um, now, clearly, in future market cycles, if we go through another speculative bubble and then come back down to the band, it would probably be prudent to to potentially refit it. Uh, I don't think it would affect it um, significantly, but um, it might be worthwhile. But if you follow the price of Bitcoin throughout the years um, and, and wonder where it is when it goes into the halving with regards to the regression band, uh, it's actually quite interesting because if you look at it, going into the having the first having um if you're not familiar with this website uh one of the one of the fans um that follows my stuff set it up uh basically they just have the primary regression equation in here and they also put in the dash lines corresponding um to the havings uh so you can see going into the first having the price was was right on that fair valuation line going into the second having the price was right on fair valuation line. And look at this, going into the third halving, despite the fact that we saw this dump um, in March, we've come back up right to the fair valuation line going into the halving. Um, so this happened every single time. Another interesting thing, and, and this is into the cryptocharts.com. If it doesn't work, you need to do like the HTTPS colon slash 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 www.intothecryptocharts.com. I'll put it in the description below if you want to check it out. Uh, there's a few charts on here, um, but uh, this one right here is not live. So the market cycle ROI one does not have live updated data, but everything else I believe is live. So you can follow along. Um, but again, we've also talked about how every every cycle going into the halving, we've also been at the 20 week moving average or thereabouts, either holding it as support or either um, above it or, or holding it as support. So you can see. Um, so going into the current halving, the the 20 week moving average is at around 7907 and if you if you look at the the price of bitcoin uh, going into the having you can basically see that the the fair valuation is at around eighty three hundred dollars or so but either way um you know it's it's interesting that we are you know, we are going into the halving around this fair valuation point, um, just like we have in past market cycles. So um, as far as what we're looking at the 20 weeks so far, uh, you know, things seem uh, right now, they seem they seem OK. We're still above the 20 week moving average. Um, obviously, at some point, we will come down back to the 20 week to try to test it as support. Uh, the current value being $7,900, but by the time we test it, you know, the 20 week moving average could be a lot higher. Um, so it just depends on what Bitcoin does in the meantime. Um, we're going to be closing this weekly candle in about a day or so, and then we'll be printing a new candle. If you see that happen, then um, that's definitely a, a very bullish sign in the short term for, for Bitcoin, uh, at least historically speaking, breaking the 20 week moving average um, does tend to, to come with a, a decent ROI, at least in the short term, and then sometimes the ROI can be significant over the long term. Um, so uh, this, is the, this is clearly the price point to be watching out for. Patience is a virtue here. You, know, you, don't, you don't need to get overly excited or, or you know, just FOMO into the market. You need to continue to stay diligent to you know, dynamically dollar cost average because the price has gone up, the risk has gone up, therefore the buys not that this is financial advice, but you know, if you're following that strategy, then your weighted buys on Bitcoin should be going down. Um, whereas the weighted buy down here would have been uh, much, much higher um, following the strategy. And if you are interested in that strategy, you can always uh, check out um, the premium stuff I offer. It, you, know, you can find it on patreon.com slash into the cryptoverse, or if you want to pay with crypto, you can 
find information to that as well in the description below. Um, but just, uh, you know, you could sign up for this tier right here and it would get you the, the weekly newsletter with risk analysis, valuation insights and logarithmic regression, a private Telegram chat room, and access to a Google Sheets document with updated risk metrics and, and a few more things. Um, and the weekly newsletter, it looks something like this. It's called the Quantitative Investor. And it's about, each one is around four or five pages long. So, um, and you'll also get access to some prior reports as well, like Ethereum letters and, and Bitcoin or and altcoin letters. If you want to get an idea of the, the work I put into those, then you can check out Bitcoin letters, which I'll also link in the description below, which is completely free. Um, so check that out. Um, finally, just uh, looking back, uh, you know, looking back at the at the price data, one of the things I want to talk about in terms of being above the 20 week, it's necessary for the bull market to, to really get in high gear. It's necessary for us to be above, above the 20 week, but it is not necessarily, it's not sufficient. It doesn't mean that it has to enter a bull market right now. As we can see, we've, we've come down and, and failed to hold the 20 week twice before during this market cycle. So it's necessary, but not sufficient. What we'll want to see is, is us stay above the 20 week for, for weeks and months to come. Um, during that time, if we're able to do so, I imagine we'll bounce off the 20 week a few times. Um, another thing I think is necessary to really get the bull market started. It, 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 you know, it doesn't mean it's going to happen now. It could, it could happen in six months. But is this idea that so many people think that it's a fake out. Um, you know, there's so many people right now in cryptocurrency, a lot of influencers, a lot of people making videos. Everyone says we're going back down here. Um, when we were here, everyone said we were going back down here. Uh, and, and people are still saying it. And this is kind of reminiscent of past market cycles where people are, you know, they're so tired of getting burned. They just keep thinking, you know, I, I thought it was going up here. I thought we were going back to 20K. It didn't happen. I thought it was happening here. It didn't happen. Therefore, it, it can't happen here. Um, that's, you know, that's ultimately the feeling. And then what happens is in the scenario that there's so many people that are waiting for that $1,800 Bitcoin or that $3,100 Bitcoin again, or that $3,500 Bitcoin, or even if it's, you know, whatever the price is, they set these specific price points and they will not buy Bitcoin until it gets to those price points. Well, at some point they realize that they were wrong and then they come back into the market. That's ultimately, I think, helps fuel the beginning of a bull market because you have all this money that was essentially waiting on the sidelines for their price point and then these people will basically start to in a sense like re reverse capitulate if you will they, they they capitulate their fiat position to come back into bitcoin um and and you know and i think that will that would help fuel a a, a future bull market so will it happen now it, it remains to be seen, but the, you know, the sentiment each time something like this happens in terms of how optimistic people are gets worse and worse, which is ultimately what we want to happen um, before, before the bull market can, can, get into, can get kicked into high gear and we can, and we can start our, our slow uptrend that we're going to want to see over the next couple years, um, potentially taking us out to... Um, you know, the end of 2021, maybe we'll get back to around $20,000 or so. So just zooming out, uh, looking something like that. Um, and then after that happens, we would then want to see a sharper move up to, you know, up to say uh, the $100,000 mark, maybe by 2023. So what happens in the short term here is irrelevant, whether we come back down and then move back up and then get on course you know, just if that happens, treat it as an opportunity and don't squander the opportunity if you get it. If that doesn't happen, then for me, I'm just sticking to the same plan that we've had all along. And that's to dynamically dollar cost average based on, on the associated risk of Bitcoin, which again, if you want access to the way I do it, just check out the, um, the Patreon channel or check out the description below for for, to pay with crypto. Um, that'll wrap it, up, wrap it up for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the content. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.